Hello everyone and welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. In today's week guys, what I'm going to have is a little bit more of an update episode. Uh, I know I haven't talked much here of the JBJ. Quite a bit of stuff has changed uh, for you guys to see. Uh, so we'll kind of give you guys a rundown um, of a miniature update here on this tank. But more importantly, the reason I'm, I'm really doing this video is going to be... I'll turn on the lights a little bit later, but... A lot of people have been asking me about the Red Sea Coral Colors A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to be kind of uh, giving you guys a rundown. I think I've had that for, I'd have to say, at least a good solid, probably six months, I'd have to say. Uh, so I surely have been running it for quite some time now. Hopefully I can give you guys what I've learned with it, you know, my successes, what I've seen with it. Um, and pretty much if it's worth you running uh, the Red Sea Coral Colors. You guys can see it is set up here on a doser. It's on the bottom doser. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. So very quickly here talking about the main scape and kind of what's changed as far as corals. Uh, one thing that has changed was I kind of redid here the Zoa Garden a little bit. I don't know if you remember, but here was mainly these purple ones. Um, I want a little bit more contrast, so I put these bad boys. Uh, they're kind of like scrambled eggs, but not really. You can see the scrambled eggs there. Um, just to get a little bit more pop and kind of rearrange them um, a little bit. Uh, but so far, it's obviously taking some time to grow in, uh, but it's growing in very nicely, and so far, I'm liking the way that's coming. So from last uh, week's visit, uh, if you guys did witness that video, I did visiting that LFS, I actually, uh, Harry's Marine Life, I actually picked up a few corals. One of them was the Scoli, um, another one was that uh, Flower Anemone, and a few other ones are uh, back here. I'm having issues with one of them, we'll cover that here in a little bit, um, but let's continue on here. So what else have I done? Not much has, has really changed with the tank. One thing that has been happening to the tank, I've never really had success. Uh, with frog spawns or hammers in this tank, uh, specifically in this area. Um, I've kind of narrowed down what I believe the issue is. And um, for you guys, you know, a quick glimpse of it, it's pretty much what I believe uh, chemical warfare. As you guys can see, I have quite a few selection of pallies here. Um, so I really think they're releasing toxins and uh, inevitably be really killing them. You can see them down there on the bottom. Um, not to mention this... Monty, this red Monty up here really needs to uh, get fragged, so I'm going to have to be taking care of that. Another great thing I've really added to the tank and I'm very proud of is kind of all those SPS pieces you see up there. There's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different pieces I have been adding. Almost all these were from uh, Unique Coral. If you guys did see that video I, while I was down there, I actually picked up quite a few of them and they're doing great. They've been in here for about two, three weeks. Uh, great polyp extension, so really can't complain anything um, as far as that's concerned. On this side, everything's looking pretty good. I'd love to fill in this dead space here. The only problem is this torch, when it gets big, it reaches all the way up here and kind of all the way down here. Uh, so it makes it a little bit difficult adding corals. Uh, you know, you do get the beautiful wave effect from them, but everything else just kind of uh, keep it away from them because it will inevitably be, uh, sting it. One thing I am going to have to remove is this uh, Kenya tree. So Kenya trees, whenever they're stressed out, as this one has been for quite some time, uh, they release toxins uh, into the water. So obviously that torch is stinging it uh, for sure. So I'm gonna have to trim that guy so it pretty much stops releasing toxins because who knows, that may actually be the one that's releasing uh, everything killing my hammers and frog spawns. Uh, it's either that or uh, the whole garden here. You know, whatever the case is, I'm gonna have to get it addressed. Um, but yeah, let's see what else. The Ganapora garden has actually been doing really well. Let me give you guys a little bit of a close-up shot. Uh, there's three different ones here. Uh, later, I'm going to be doing a video on kind of how to care for these bad boys. Uh, so far, they've been pretty easy. I can't really, uh, you know, complain much about it. And look at this guy. Here he comes. Oh, look at that flower. Um, but yeah, I'm also going to have a care video for Scolies. This one is, I mean, this is my hand, guys. Look at that. This thing is huge. 
uh, been here for quite a while so it's quite acclimated to the tank this one just got in here uh, so she's getting used to it uh, but really love the the color splash uh, it's kind of a reverse of this although this one pretty much doesn't have green it's uh, like a black black bluish uh, with red uh, but very happy with it uh, so yeah in the future I'm going to be having a video on kind of how to care for Ghanis, how to care for Scolies, because uh, I know quite a few people uh, have been me or have been asking me for an update on that. Another thing I have changed in the tank, I don't know how much you guys pay attention, but I used to have an innovative marine reactor here. I believe it was a desktop size, and I want to talk about that not in this video, but in a future episode, because uh, I started having problems with it specifically tumbling GFO. Sure enough, I start talking to more and more people and it's a common issue uh, with that reactor. Uh, pretty much, long story short, if you run ROAFAS or pretty much any type of GFO, it'll tend to crush uh, the bottom pieces because it's tumbling so fast. Um, and the t what ends up happening, it pretty much drops everything as far as dust back into the tank and it'll create kind of like a, a rust color on your filter floss your filter socks um, and at the end of the day you just won't have co um, uh, consistent phosphate uh, parameters so it's something i had an issue with but funny enough i've been noticing people dming me about the same issue uh, so i do want to make you guys aware probably in a follow-up video so i've uh, kind of switched out to a full-size reactor kind of here a, a hang on back one uh, this one at the moment is tumbling roafaz i'm absolutely sold on roafaz uh, it's probably all I'm, all I'm be using uh, from this point forward. Another big change we have coming, guys, is going to be uh, a calcium reactor. We're going to pretty much replace every single one of these lines in just with one line, which is going to be a calcium reactor. The, a lot of you guys are probably saying that's overkill for a tank this size, uh, but certainly something I want to do. Uh, not only you know to do it, but I'm using this tank as... Uh, uh, as a testing tank uh, now that I'm very happy with the tank you know I'm willing to venture off and test it so when I do go to my bigger setup uh, I'm gonna have my feet wet if you will yeah so out of the four flower anemones these uh, two are doing pretty good uh, the other one you saw on the sand bed over there is doing pretty good but this one here is just kind of shriveled up and sadly kind of become nothing uh, so I'm not sure what's going on with it uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to chase parameters just to, you know, care for that one. Um, I just think it either was unhappy from the beginning or, uh, you know, there's clearly something that, that you know, caused it to, to be unhappy. But um, at least three of the four are doing pretty good, so can't really complain as far as that's concerned. So the part you guys have all been waiting for, and that is going to be covering and kind of my final thoughts on the Red Sea Coral Colors. So the coral colors I've been running for about one year now. If you guys did miss my original video, be sure to go check that out. Um, I'll have a link in the description. But um, I started running that uh, mainly because if you guys know, my tank kind of goes without water changes. So it's very important that I replace the trace elements. Uh, one way of doing that was obviously, uh, you know, doing them individually with the Red Sea uh, color program. It was a program I like because obviously Red Sea has... Uh, some great products out there. Um, they give you kind of the, si the scientific background, so uh, it, it's very good all the background they give you on the product. So Red Sea Coral Colors, um, it goes by A, B, C, and D. Um, I won't go through every single trace element they contain, but uh, with all these four products combined, you cover a total of 31 uh, minor trace elements, obviously required by corals. So in the A, you have halogens. In the B, you have potassium and boron. C, you have uh, ferron as well as uh, complementary metals. Uh, D, you have 18 bioactive trace elements. So again, all together, it covers uh, 31 minor trace elements uh, that obviously our corals need uh, to survive, to be happy, and to have great coloration. One thing that a lot of people I heard talk about, Red Sea Coral Colors, they kind of drew me to it it's very good at helping out your colors so it's actually pretty specifically targeted to pink red green yellow purple and blues um, so one thing when i started running this i kind of uh, started looking at those colors and uh, i mean you know you guys can see here in the video specifically in my tank i've seen it for sure help um, a lot out in the uh, blue colors 
Uh, I don't have too many yellow corals, but the few I do have, I do see uh, good color in them as well. But specifically in the red and green colors, I've noticed a lot of great coloration, even in the pink. Uh, my Satosa really has a nice uh, shade of pink, but all in all, I think the red colors have become a lot more vibrant. Uh, so have the greens. And just like some off colors like the blue, the purples, and yellows, I've noticed uh, some good pop, obviously, if the coral uh, does have uh, those colors. So dosing this stuff is pretty straightforward. I do have it on a uh, four-channel doser. And I think for the, the way you dose this, it's based on your calcium consumption, which is another reason I went with it. Um, I think based on my calcium consumption, I'm dosing uh, 0.8 milliliters every day. So not even one milliliter, it's less than uh, that. It's 0.8 to 0.7 every day. Um, and I just do one dose a day. I don't break it up. It's just one dose every single day. Um, I've done a few uh, ICP tests and everything's been in line. So that kind of tells me I'm not overdosing it. Uh, so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's worked great for me. I really have no complaints um, and I'd highly recommend it, uh, you know, to anyone out there. If you are going to run this, you're probably better off doing it on a doser just because, you know, it's going to get kind of a little bit difficult dosing four different elements every single day. Um, so if you do have a doser, also make sure the doser you get does less than one milliliter. That's one reason I didn't use a JBO because um, I needed to control the doses a little bit better which is why I went with the coral box. It does um, as little as 0.1 milliliter. So just kind of keep that in mind. So if you guys are looking for a product out there to kind of help you with your trace elements, uh, Red Sea uh, Coral Colors surely has done the job for me. So it's something I'm gonna highly recommend. So I really hope you guys enjoyed uh, this update video. I know I had quite a bit of information. Um, I tried to give you guys as best as I could an update, but really make the video about uh, the Red Sea Coral Colors, because I know a lot of people have been asking me, um, how's it been doing for the tank? But, you know, I think uh, uh, as far as the richness of the colors, uh, a lot of it has to do to that specific product. Uh, between that and my polyp lap refroids, I think both of those working together uh, have optimally, at the end of the day, really uh, increased my reds, increased my blues, uh, my greens, and just made them a lot d uh, darker and uh, more pronounced, if you will, in the tank. So. We're going to leave this video here, everyone. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe, guys, if you guys aren't subscribed. Also, if you haven't checked out my podcast, please head over to thereeftalk.com. We just released episode five. Uh, and so far, everybody's been loving it. So if you aren't subscribed to that, be sure to go check it out. And again, we're going to leave this video here, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.